Hey everyone, Irix Guy here. I uh, just wanted to do a video editing test of the MacBook Pro 13 inch. Now I've got the latest model, the 2012 Ivy Bridge. I've got the 8 gigs of memory, which is the maximum for this 2012 13 inch. And I also have the 128 gig SSD hard drive. So let's uh, open Final Cut Pro 10 and let's do a little test here. Uh, so if you watch my YouTube channel, you may have noticed that a lot of my, a lot of my videos, I utilize the green screen uh, to superimpose a background, uh, either a uh, picture or full motion video. So uh, let's take a sample clip. This right here is me talking, and I filmed it in front of the green screen. So let's just do a few edits. Uh, one thing you're going to notice with the MacBook Air, and keep in mind my primary editing machine is a uh, iMac desktop i7. 8 gigs of memory. So it's, even though it's the 2009 iMac, when it comes to, uh, now when it comes to Final Cut Pro 10 performance, it definitely beats this, this uh, less, less powerful MacBook Air. But the thing you'll notice when you're playing, like, let's play this clip here. Hey everyone, Irix Sky here. Because of the SSD, it's just everything, everything is very fluid. Uh, when you're dragging throughout your video clip to make edits, it's going to feel, at least from my experience, even though the clock speed of this MacBook Air is not as fast as the as my desktop iMac, because it's like a 2.8 gigahertz i7. Uh, this MacBook Air is a uh, is it 1.8 or 1.9 gigahertz i5. So it's only a dual core. The iMac uh, desktop is a quad core. So let's let's do a few edits. So one thing you may do if you're editing video, uh, you may do a little blade and cut out some of the lead-in parts. And likewise, at the end, you'll probably cut out like right there where I, where I stopped talking before I went to the camera. So I'm going to do a blade, and then I'm going to do a delete. Now here's where you're really going to see the performance. It, that's not quite as fast as a more powerful uh, desktop iMac or or uh, Mac Pro for that matter, but it's still good. I mean, if you're in the field and you need a more affordable Mac, something that's lightweight, easy to carry, you're about to see why this MacBook Air does not disappoint. So we're going to do the uh, the keying. We're going to add chroma keyer. And as you're aware, if you've if you've performed video editing. That little orange line up there at the top is showing the uh, the progress that it's making with applying this uh, chroma key effect to this clip. So it's starting to move now. As you can see, it's uh, it's uh, <laughs> past the double zeros there. And then likewise, this uh, this indicator here is your percentage complete of actually uh, completing that that effect. In this case, this effect is keying, the keyer effect, chroma key. So uh, you can see it's kind of uh, kind of slow, but it's it's slow from a uh, processing perspective. When you're in here applying the edits, it's going to feel really snappy because of the SSD hard drive. But when you're waiting for the edits that have been applied to, to, uh, to finish rendering here, uh, you know, indicated by that orange line and the percentage down below my uh, myself right there, you'll notice that's slower. But, see, we don't have to wait for that to complete before we resume our edit. So let me pop open uh, iPhoto and let's drag in a, uh, let's drag in a background. Uh, this computer, I don't have uh, a large video or photo library at all because... I want to keep this uh, computer strictly for. I want to keep all of the hard disk space for housing my video and photos that I use in the field. So we can just drag this across here. This background, the actually the same background that I got in my on my MacBook Air's desktop. It was a picture I snapped on. Uh, let's see which beach? Oh, this was Elbow Beach in Bermuda. I thought it looked really cool. So then we can go in, and you can see how these edits, how smoothly, even with the slower processor speed compared to a desktop Mac, how smooth all of this is. Like now I'm going to do a transform, 
and I'm going to maximize my background. So I mean everything is uh, everything is very smooth. And now if, if I stop uh, messing with uh, with Final Cut Pro for a moment, it's, it should start to uh, to render this again. And you can see it is because that orange bar is uh, slowly moving. So is it uh, is a MacBook Air sufficient for Final Cut Pro editing? My opinion is that it definitely is. If you're a if you're a recreational video editor, you know maybe you you you, you know you've got a laptop. You didn't want to get the you didn't want to splurge for the uh, for the higher end laptop, but you got the uh, the MacBook Air and you want to do some edits. It's perfectly great, as you can see here. Your only uh, your only limitation will be actually there's a few limitations. You will definitely have to wait longer for the uh, for the video edits that you apply to finish rendering before you can export them. So just to kind of give you, if we zoom out here, kind of give you a whole whole picture here. This video clip is four minutes and twenty three seconds total. So we would have to wait before we could export this. We'd have to wait for that orange bar to get all the way over here to where my to where my cursor is at the end of the clip. So that may take a while. Now is that a problem? If you're a recreational video editor and you may do one video every few days, every few months or so, it's not at all because in all sincerity, this whole video and and I'm not going to uh to keep this up the entire time that it's that it's doing its uh that it's doing its rendering, but this whole video I would assume would likely be able to uh to complete its its rendering job in about 30 minutes or so based upon the status that I'm seeing now so it's great I mean it's it's great and it's also great if you're uh, you, you know if you've got if you are a serious video editor and maybe at your home or your office you've got a, a Mac desktop either an iMac or a Mac Pro and you just want something in the field to uh, to go ahead and and import your the video that you've shot, the photos that you shot, import them into a Mac so that you can see on the screen and within your uh, Final Cut Pro 10 software if the video meets your expectations. Because the worst thing ever, especially if you're, uh, you know, pretty far from your home or your office, and you shoot all this video, and then you get back to your home or your office and you download it to your desktop, and you find that oh, it's decent, but I wish I had panned a little bit further to the left and got a shot of you know, whatever on the beach. Or, you know, maybe I, uh, maybe when I was filming someone talking, they, you know, the camera was a little bit too low and it didn't come out good. So it's good to be able to have this, to have a uh, fully functional Mac computer in the field with you so that you can see immediately after you shoot your video or shoot your photos whether or not it meets your expectations. And that's why I use this. Now, the other limitation that I wanted to bring up was the storage. You can get this this uh, MacBook uh, uh, MacBook Air 13 inch. I think I think right now they let you go up to 512 gig solid state hard drive. But when you do that, you're going to tack on hundreds of dollars to the price. In the same scenario, if you if you opted for the uh, uh, for the 256 gig solid state hard drive. Personally, I think the 64 gig solid state is way too small. Because even after importing a few HD clips, you're going to be approaching maximum capacity on that 64 gig SSD. Now, if you're using uh, a 128 gig SSD, even after I installed all my software and even some photo editing software as well, I've still got around uh, around 90 gigs free, which which is more than sufficient for me. Now, what I would recommend instead of spending that extra money for the bigger internal SSD hard drive on the uh, on the MacBook Air, I mean, if your if your travels to uh, to shoot video and photos, if they if they only last a few days or maybe a week, more than likely, if you have a 128 gig SSD drive uh, in your MacBook Air, it's probably going to be more than enough space to get you through that trip and get you through some uh, edits in the field. But if it's not, what you may consider instead of splurging for uh, you know that few hundred dollars extra to uh, to get the 256 or the 512 gig SSD is just get an inexpensive 
USB 3.0, USB 2.0, external hard drive. You can get that off of newegg.com or somewhere similar, probably for uh, probably for around a hundred bucks or less. And, and that'll provide you with plenty of external storage. You can simply plug into your into your MacBooks MacBook Airs uh, a USB 3.0 port and have extra storage while you're in the field. Now, for me personally, what I do when I get home to uh, to process all my video on my desktop Mac. I store all my video on a network attached storage device. So by doing that, what it enables me to do is save, retain all of my video clips in an affordable storage location. Because you can get NAS drives for not much at all. And I mean, they can be multi terabytes in capacity. So uh, you can put your, uh, put your video clips on there. And then when you're getting ready to edit them at your house or on the road for that matter, uh, you can just drag them onto your, uh, you know, either your your MacBook Air or your iMac desktop, so that they're being edited from the hard drive itself. You don't want to you don't want to perform edits over the uh, over the network because it's going to degrade the performance. But you can drag them over to your to your computer temporarily, do your edits, and then you've always got a backup copy of the original video out on your home or office cloud, as you would say. The cloud being your your uh, home, uh, your home network, you know, your network attached storage. So all of your devices can share that uh, network attached storage drive as a central location for for saving video clips to and retrieving video clips from. And it's just a way I found. I mean, I know Macs uh, to most people, most people consider Macs to be expensive, and I do as well. But you do get what you pay for. But you don't necessarily have to splurge and go out and get all the upgrades to the Mac. You definitely want as, as much memory as you can get, but as far as a hard drive, you can get by comfortably uh, with your uh, with your MacBook Air if you do the 128 gig SSS. I'm sorry, your 128 gig SSD hard drive option like I did, and I mean it works great. And as you can see here, uh, while I've continued this conversation, uh, we're already 41 seconds, uh, a little bit over 41 seconds into the. Uh, into the rendering job, so it's definitely not, it's definitely not super slow at all. I mean, this is a about a four minute and twenty three second video clip that was shot in HD. So for it, for this MacBook Air to be rendering uh, this video as efficiently as it is with the i5 processor, I mean, I'm below two gigahertz. I'm highly impressed. Now, granted, if this was my desktop iMac, this whole uh, rendering job would have already been completed. But again, this MacBook Air is portability or primary desktop for a recreational video editor. Someone that could step away right now and say, hey, that 4 minute and 23 second video clip, if it takes it a half hour to render, that's fine. I'm just going to go do something. I'll come back and then I'll export it and upload it to YouTube or wherever. But if you're processing a lot of videos like I do, uh, you would definitely in my opinion, you would definitely want a uh, a desktop iMac or desktop Mac Pro to uh, to complement your uh, portable MacBook Air. Uh, as always, thanks for tuning in, and I appreciate your feedback. Uh, feel free to share this video with others, and feel free to check out all my other videos. I've got a lot of Final Cut Pro 10 videos as well as uh, MacBook Air videos. If there's something I haven't addressed yet, uh, let me know, and I'll see if... Uh, See if I can get a video up for you. And my YouTube channel, of course, is youtube.com forward slash Irix guy. Y'all have a good one.